Well, hello everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Live tonight. Uh, this obviously um, is not the museum. We've had a little change of plans tonight, but I think you'll enjoy it because we are in a museum quality building, and that's for sure. We're at the old courthouse tonight, and we're going to talk about uh, the five courthouses in Randolph County. We're going to give you a tour of the building. We may talk about some Arkansas first, and we're going to tell a couple of history stories. So I think you'll enjoy it. Here's what happened. The museum had an electrical meter in the back that needed work. Well, of course, Entergy planned this day to come and fix it. And, of course, big problems arose, and they couldn't get it all fixed today. So the museum does not have electricity tonight. We're going to be at the museum probably week after next. So tonight we're at the old courthouse. And sure enough, still, Pocahontas is full of some great history and heritage. So we didn't have to change the title at all tonight. I'm Linda Bowen. Um, I'm a member of Five Rivers, Five Rivers Historic Preservation, Inc. And as you know, Five Rivers sponsors the Facebook Lives and the little history tours around Pocahontas. I have um, with me tonight, well, our producer's back. Allison Schachtel has been on assignment and on location for, <laughs> for, for a number of weeks, but she's back, along with the co-producer, Nathan Camp, both of whom are officers in Five Rivers Historic Preservation, Inc., and, of course, our cameraman and director, John Allen French, who is also um, an officer in Five Rivers uh, Preservation. Now, as I've said before, if you love Pocahontas, if you love Randolph County, if you have an interest in history, we would love for you to join us because there's a whole lot to do and it's a whole lot of fun. So, let's go ahead and start. Then, I'm going to sit down here. And I have some notes because this is impromptu. I mean, we found out at 3.30 this afternoon that we couldn't go to the museum. 
So I have some notes here, and I also have a couple of reference books that I need to show you. Um, and I'm going to be I'm going to read like a short paragraph from both of these books. But the first one, if the director <laughs> do I need, here, do I need to sit like this? Okay. The first one is the history of Randolph County, and this has more or less been considered a definitive work by Lawrence Dalton. It was published um, years ago, I think back in the 40s, the late 40s, do you know? Anyway, the history of Randolph County. It's very hard to come by. There might be a few things that, you know, may or may not be 100% accurate, but it's a real good book about Randolph County, the history. Sometimes you can find it on eBay or elsewhere. And then the other book that we're going to be talking about is called The Arkansas Lawyer. And the Arkansas Lawyer was published in the 50s and written by a lawyer named Tom Campbell, who was a prominent lawyer here for a number of years. And he um, um, also then after that went to Little Rock and became a state official and led a very interesting and, and colorful life. The Arkansas Lawyer is the name of this book. And it's very hard to find, but it's very interesting. Tom Campbell grew up out in Water Valley and it tells all about his growing up out there and how interesting that was. And then he was a, a, tenor, well, he was a school teacher who traveled from school to school for a while before he sat for the law. So anyway, these are the two books that we're going to be talking about. Tom Campbell actually tried cases in this courthouse, and there's one in particular that we're going to be discussing in a little while. But let's get started on some background. Let's, let's check your um, Randolph County. Let's check, your volume real quick. check my what? The volume. Okay. Um, Randolph County has had five courthouses within its boundaries. Now, the first two courthouses were territorial houses, uh, territorial courthouses, and I want to tell you about those, but let's talk about the territory first. We are part of the Louisiana Purchase. The Louisiana Purchase involved almost, probably, more than half of the land between the Mississippi River and California. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was land that was first owned by France, in 1699, France held it for 70 years. I don't mean first owned by France, but I mean when somebody owned it, finally. It was France. 1699, they owned it for 70 years. <laughs> then it went to Spain for 30 years, and then back to France for three years. And then in 1803, that big mass of land, all the way from Montana all the way down, a couple of part of some provinces in Canada, and all the way back to the Mississippi, was called the Louisiana Purchase, and it was purchased for the United States by President uh, Jefferson in 1803. And so it became part of the American frontier at that point. And people began to move across the river, move here, and start settling here. Um, and Arkansas is a part of it. I knew a fellow one time who, when someone asked him where he was from, he was from Arkansas. But uh, if someone asked him if he was from Louisiana, and he said yes, in the larger sense. So as part of the Louisiana Purchase, yes, we're all from Louisiana in the larger sense. Um, Thomas Jefferson, the United States, paid $15 million for all this land, and that calculates out to four cents an acre. Now that's pretty amazing. So, so other interesting thing about the Louisiana Purchase and Arkansas and our neck of the woods is that in early, early after the Louisiana Purchase, when people were trying to get out west, they couldn't come straight across from Tennessee and straight across from Mississippi. People had to go up into Kentucky, up over across the Mississippi River north of here, and then come down through our county, what ultimately became our county, uh, on what was called the Southwest Trail. It was also known as the Old Military Road, and it was known as the Natchitoches Trail, and a portion of the Trail of Tears ultimately traveled that same route. But people entered Arkansas, or entered what is now Arkansas, of course it wasn't then, um, at a place called Pittman Ferry, which is north of Maynard, uh, on the current river, and that was part of the Southwest Trail. The Southwest Trail never came through Pocahontas, but it traveled from Pittman to Maynard and then crossed over to, like, on the way to Imboden, uh, 
through out by Highway 62. So that's, that's really interesting to know about, that people, when they first traveled west, at least southwest, they came through our county first. And so um, because of that, our, our, our place, our county had Davidsonville, which one is, was one of the first settlements, full-fledged settlements in Arkansas. At that time, Davidsonville was part of Lawrence County, but not Lawrence County, Arkansas. It was Lawrence County of the, front, of the frontier of the Louisiana Purchase. And Lawrence County extended from north of Little Rock to south of St. Louis. Davidsonville, in what is now Arkansas, was the second settlement, the first being Arkansas Post. So Davidsonville naturally became a seat of government for the territory back in 1813. Um, it, that's why we had such an early uh, Arkansas history related to courthouses. As I said, we had five courthouses. The first one was built at Davidsonville. Now, as most of you all know, Davidsonville kind of went kaput in 1830. It didn't exist very long, and there's various theories about why that happened, none of which really involve yellow fever, although I heard that all my life. Uh, but at any rate, when Davidsonville oh dissolved, then the territorial capital, or the territorial, it wasn't the capital, the territorial seat of government moved to Jackson, what we now call Old Jackson. And that, again, is within the boundaries of Randolph County. And Jackson is, is close to the Spring River at the bridge on Highway 62 going into Imboden. If you're coming back across the bridge from Imboden, you keep going straight and the road becomes gravel instead of turning to go to Pocahontas. It becomes gravel and Jackson is just a few, not even a mile on, on that road on, on gravel. And again, it was on the Southwest Trail because it was important to keep um, the, the towns or the seats of government on the Southwest Trail. If you go to Jackson now, there's absolutely nothing there. But if you kind of squint your eyes and you use twilight vision, you can, <laughs> you can kind of see what might have been a court square. Anyway, there was a courthouse uh, there. So that's the second courthouse. So now we get to Pocahontas. Well, as you know, Pocahontas was settled. This area was settled by Ransom Bettis and Thomas Drew and William Omar, Thomas Omar, um, back around 1817. Now, Bettis was following the frontier, and he had been a ferryman up in up other places, but also most recently up in Missouri before he came here. And I'm put, are you going to sleep? Okay. Well, anyway, so Bettis, Bettis was following the frontier from the north, and Thomas Drew was, was coming from the south. And they settled here because we had a navigable river. And by then, the steamboats and some of the uh, other kinds of boats, I've forgotten the name of them, were coming up the river, and later, all the way even from New Orleans, it was navigable. But they saw this as a perfect place for a ferry and also a perfect place for a settlement and for their businesses. So they were here in Bettis Bluff, and Arkansas was about to become a state in 1836 when Randolph County was formed. It was formed the year before statehood, but Randolph County separated out from Lawrence County um, and, be, and, and needed a county seat, a seat of government. Well, there were two towns that were vying to become that seat of government. One of them was Columbia, which was over by Maynard, and the other over by Maynard, and the other one was Pocahontas, which was here. Well, Bettis and Drew and Marr were pretty powerful and clever men, and so uh, the date for the county to vote on where the county seat would be was, not that you need to know the date, but the date's kind of interesting, was May the 1st, 1834. That's the date that the whole county was going to vote uh, on where the county seat would be. And also, Pocahontas had become named Pocahontas the year before instead of Bettis Bluff. Now, Dalton tells the story about how the county seat became Pocahontas. He says, the chief reason that Pocahontas won the election was due to the fact that Bettis and Drew owned the site, they owned all this town area of Pocahontas, and when the election was advertised, 
for that very same date, those men advertised a big free barbecue and picnic to be held at Pocahontas on the very, on election day. And a majority of the voters in the county attended. They say around 2,000 people attended that barbecue. Eats were plentiful and liquor flowed freely. All free. All free and provided by Bettis and Drew. After partaking of the eats and drinking the free liquor of the sponsors, the crowd, so we are told, felt much invigorated and also kindly, they felt kindly toward Drew and Bettis, and they were easily persuaded to vote for Pocahontas. So that's how Pocahontas became county seat, according to Dalton and according to other history, um, which I, is, a, is great, interesting tradition. But Columbia was really, really, really mad about it. But at any rate, we became the county seat here. So we needed a courthouse. Now, as I said, Drew owned all this property here, and he donated it to the town of Pocahontas. And you can see the deed at the, in the county records, and the deed is indeed this where this courthouse is in a 15-square block area. The deed is signed by Thomas Drew, Cinderella Bettis Drew, and it's witnessed by Ransom Bettis. You can see all their signatures on that deed when Thomas Drew donated this. Well... Thomas Marr, Marr Street's named for him, and the park up where the pool is is named for him. Thomas Drew was apparently a contractor. He was also a postmaster, and he was county clerk and a few other things. But at any rate, he got the contract to build the courthouse right here in the center of Pocahontas, right here in the center of town in the court square. Uh, he was paid $2,400 to build the courthouse, and it was a wood frame, wooden structure, and that was in 1834. Five or eight, no, 1836 or 37. Um, and so he built it, and it took a while to build it. And when he did, then um, this, this, that was the first courthouse that was established here. So that's the third courthouse in Randolph County. Well, Thomas Drew wasn't as good of a builder, I guess, as he could have been. It was structurally weak. It was not a good building. And ultimately, by the time of the Civil War, about 20 years later or 25 years later, the whole thing was in shambles, practically. The roof was falling in, the ceiling was falling in, the whole bit. And so um, there was a drive to build a new courthouse here, and that's the building that we're in right now. It was built in 1873 on this site, and it was built for $39,000. Okay, getting back, to, uh, uh, getting back to Mar and the courthouse crumbling, they had to have a place to store their records and to have their courthouse functions, meaning, meaning the functions of a courthouse, I don't mean parties, um, between the time that the, the building had fallen in and the time for the new courthouse. And so the records were kept in the basement of the county jail, which was down there behind the theater, and court business was handled, some of it over here at the St. Charles Hotel, some of it over in the building where the Star Herald is now, or at least on that block. And so our, our court and our justice system was scattered for a period of time between the time of the court, this courthouse, the old courthouse, I mean the old, old courthouse <laughs> caving in and this courthouse having been built. And as I said, this uh, courthouse uh, was built in 1873. It's a wonderful um, design. It's of a, the Italianate uh, style of building, and apparently buildings were beginning to be made of brick back then. The Sago brothers, related to our cameraman and director John Allen French, the Sago brothers built this courthouse uh, back in 1873, and it has wonderful characteristics of the style. It has symmetrical, or it has identical facades, you know, front door, back door, or it could be back front door, back door, not sure which, but the sides look alike. Um, it's symmetrical when you look at it. It has tall, slim glass windows with arches over the top that some, some, uh, in some vernacular it's called, are called eyebrows over the top of those. It has beautiful woodwork around the eaves, under the eaves and under the roof. If, you've ever, if you're ever down here, take a look at all, the, all this because it's really interesting. The brackets under the eaves is what I'm trying to talk, uh, say. Um, so then they moved in this courthouse and it was used from when they moved in after 1873, and I don't know what year, it may have been 75 that they moved in, 
until the new courthouse was built in 1940. So they used this building for almost 70 years, and that's really uh, interesting. And a lot of interesting trials happened upstairs, and I'm going to tell you about one of them in a, min in a minute. Um, the, um, where do I go from here? Okay, I want to I want to tell you also before we take the tour, because of what I mentioned about entry into the into the South and and traveling to the Southwest, even down into Texas, traveling down into Texas, um, people had to come through here. We were between here and Memphis was swamp. West of here was the Ozarks, and we're we were in a geographical area called the Upland River Valleys, which made travel very easy through here. So people came here at, across Hicks Ferry and then traveled to the, to the west and the southwest and, of course, down into Arkansas and all that. People did not enter Arkansas through Batesville. They entered through Randolph, Randolph County. Uh, but I want to tell you, because of that, we have a lot of Arkansas firsts. Our Arkansas firsts, because this is the first place that people stopped except for the people that went down the Mississippi River and were at Arkansas Post. Okay, we had the first grist mill. It was right here, down at the down on Mill Creek, uh, by the Demuns. The Demun brothers, who were French, came here and started a grist mill somewhere around 1800, a little bit before I think the Louisiana Purchase. But at any rate, the first grist mill, grist mill in what is now Arkansas, the first ferry in Arkansas was at Pittman. It was first owned by Mr. Hicks, and then Dr. Pittman ran it. After that, we had the first planned town in Arkansas, and that was Davidsonville. It was platted and laid out, and you can, if you visit out there, you can see how it was platted. We had the first court in Arkansas here in the home of Solomon Hewitt, which I think is out on the Attica Road, and I think that building's still, I don't know if that building's still standing, but anyway, the first court. We had the first post office in Arkansas at Davidsonville. The first school in Arkansas at Ravenden Springs, and that's in the cave, and when we visit the museum in two weeks, I'll show you a picture of the cave where the first school was. The first Methodist circuit rider in Arkansas was Eli Lindsay, and he was here. The first Baptist church in Arkansas is at Columbia Jarrett, and if you drive between Highway 115 and the Attica Road, you'll see a sign that says First Baptist Church in Arkansas go in there and take a look, except it's not the same church. It's just the location of where that church was. The first land office, the first courthouse in Arkansas, and as I said, that was at Davidsonville. And interestingly about that courthouse, Stephen Austin, the father of Texas, sat court there as judge at one point before, while Davidsonville was in, in operation between 1813 and 1830. The first Masonic Lodge in Arkansas. Somebody's making a correction. I knew it would be Pat. The old courthouse was finished in 1873, but the county couldn't afford to pay the builder. Oh, yes, this is, this is a saga about the old courthouse and the Sagos. So it wasn't occupied until they raised the money. So that was about 1875. The county was bankrupt after the Civil War is why they couldn't pay for the courthouse. Amazing that the people raised the money for pay, to pay for the magnificent building. And Pat, I really appreciate you telling me that because I knew there was some payment scandal, but I wasn't sure what it was. So, so thanks a whole lot. Um, okay, and let me get just a few more first. The first Masonic Lodge in Arkansas was at Breakville. I forgot where that is, but Breakville, people that live there know where it is. And here's my favorite. The very first circus in Arkansas was at Pittman. So the circus was traveling the Southwest Trail and they crossed the ferry and they didn't have enough money to pay for the transportation across the river. And so they set up right there at Pittman in that Civil War site and they had the first circus in Arkansas. Um, and that was in 1838. Um, the first all-American football player, of course, we're Schoonover, is from Pocahontas. And then the first quilt trail in Arkansas is right here in Pocahontas, and it's still uh, on some of the buildings off the square, the pictures of the quilts. The oldest standing home in Arkansas is at Dalton. That's a log home, oldest standing log home, which is also the oldest standing business. That's at Dalton. The oldest barbershop in Arkansas that's continually operated is in Pocahontas, although 
Argenta, North Little Rock, says that they have the oldest one, but ours, ours is older. <laughs> and the oldest site of pharmacy that's continually operated except for when it burned was right over there at Futile Pharmacy. And then the other great thing is that the Wonder Horse was invented in Pocahontas. So, with that, I think we're going to take a tour now of the wonderful building. Let me say first that this building, and I think John Allen showed you the plaque out there, was restored beautifully by the state of Arkansas in 1980. It was saved a few years prior to that. Um, it's, it's, um, this, this room that we're in right now is the conference room to be used by the community. And this table was built by, uh, out of local wood by a, a boy named, a man named Barrows. And I can't remember his first name. Uh, I went to school with his sister and her name was Christine Barrows. And he built this room specifically, for, this table specifically for this room after the renovation. And it's a beautiful table. Um, so now we're gonna take a little tour of this area. And then we'll go upstairs. Okay, John Allen, just lead the way, and we'll. And there's not a lot that, that we'll say about this, other than there's some great old pictures of Pocahontas people, uh, particularly people related to the courts. There's pictures of the sheriffs and the grand juries and and the potbelly stoves that were in the courthouse and all that. I want to also add that this building is owned by Randolph County and was renovated by the state of Arkansas. And so, uh, can, you, can you get the speaker? And so, I want to encourage everybody to come here. Come here and come in here and look at this wonderful building and use the restroom. Um, look at this wonderful building and look at all the pictures and everything because this building is yours. This building belongs to the people of Randolph County. It doesn't belong to the Chamber of Commerce. It doesn't belong to the library who used to be here. It doesn't belong to the USO who used to have parties in Teen Town upstairs. It belongs to the people of Randolph County. So I want to really encourage you. And now you're showing them the newest thing here. That's not historic. But anyway, that's the elevator that was put here. <laughs> that was put here just a few years ago. And thank goodness for the elevator um, because these steps are very, very steep. Now this hallway, I'll tell you a story about this hallway in my family. My mother lived way over by the old hospital and she went to school way up by the tennis courts. And every single day of her school year, she would walk to school and come and run through this hallway on the way to school and run back through this hallway on the way home. Or I'm sure she walked as she got older. But at any rate, back then, everybody knew that this courthouse was theirs. And everybody was proud of it and everybody used it and considered it theirs. So we'll go on upstairs now and see the courtroom. of the courthouse down there. <laughs> anyway, beautiful, beautiful area. I'm going to walk in front of the camera. This is the great, magnificent courtroom. And there's quite an echo here, but I think you can probably hear me. There's an echo whether you have a sound system or not, to tell you the truth. Currently, this room can be rented. Currently, this room can be rented for uh, wedding receptions, or for parties, or for conferences. About four or five years ago, we had the Arkansas Historical. We had the Arkansas Historical Association here. Let me just turn this on. 
absolutely loves it. So let's go over here a minute, and I'm going to tell this story about. I'm going to tell the story about the court case. I love the story about the court case. Now, as I said, this is our courtroom for almost 70 years, and only one case. Tom Campbell immediately moved for a 
a mistrial and the judge denied it, that Tom Kim will be so worried that it had been so emotional that the jury would, would, would hang his, his poor little guy because then he should have dropped dead in front of the jury. Well, the bailiff came back and told the judge, Mr. Short, Senator Short had not made it, that he had passed away. The judge sent the jury out to deliberate, and within minutes, the jury came back and found the defendant not guilty. Mic drop. And that's the end of that case. But that happened right here in this courtroom, probably close to where we're close to where I'm standing. This courtroom's not all that big. So, um, that concludes our program tonight. It was impromptu. We hadn't really prepared a whole lot for it, but it's a lot more really interesting, I think. Now, next week, we're going to have a good program. We're going to get the Les Master Guest Houses house, and we're going to show all the suites and all of the um, apartments there, which a lot of people haven't seen. And it's in a historic building that's been uh, renovated, exquisitely renovated. And then the week after that, we'll go to the museum. So, thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.